Hi folks, it's Mark Smith with Family Tree Brand Life Coaches. I, uh, I missed having the live stream show this week, but it fell on July the 4th. So um, I thought I would share a little something here on July the 5th for the regular viewers to munch on. I have a unique video for me. Um, most of my videos, as, as you know, um, are basically me more in the role as a recovering um, person who's gone through narcissistic abuse syndrome. And today I'm going to take my recovering person hat off and I'm going to put on my, my therapist hat, which I don't often do. So, yeah, I, I, I'm a bit of an expert in uh, healing the complex PTSD symptoms that I have suffered with. Just last week, last Tuesday, I was, uh, I was swimming in the ocean and I was praying and I said, Lord, Lord, please heal me. And I swear to you, I had this voice come back to me almost immediately and the voice said, heal yourself. And it, it almost, and, and, I, and I, I know God doesn't talk like this, uh, but it, it, it almost sounded like he was saying, heal your own damn self. And, and I, I, I think the message from God or the universe was, you know what you're supposed to be doing go to therapy, do yoga, get exercise every day, eat right, get massages, and you're going to get better and you're going to uh, heal yourself. But if you slack off and you don't do the work and you eat terribly and you don't get enough sleep and you abuse your body, the Lord ain't going to jump out of heaven, jump down in the water to save you. Uh, just a little side note there. I'm going to be, <coughs> excuse me, quoting uh, one of my heroes, uh, Dr. Irvin Yalom. This is a great man. I think he's one of the world's best therapists, and he's a great writer. And um, I... Uh, I'm going to quote him a lot in uh, this video. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is talk about therapy with borderline clients. And a lot of you have been given that um, diagnosis. <coughs> Excuse me. And it may be accurate. It may not be accurate. But if you're in the neighborhood... There is more than one brand of therapy if you've been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. <clears throat> Most people, they'll go right to, uh, hey, you need DBT, DBT, DBT. That's all there is. For those of you who don't know what DBT is, it's a cognitive behavioral treatment that was originally developed to treat chronically suicidal individuals diagnosed as having borderline personality disorder. And it is now recognized as the gold standard psychological treatment for this population. So it's, it's a good therapy. It's a good treatment. And if you have borderline personality disorder, it's one way to go. But <clears throat> there's a lot of ways to heal. In addition, research has shown that it is effective in treating a wide range of other disorders, such as substance dependence, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and eating disorders. This is from the Linehan Institute. So uh, I've been messing with the title a little bit, but this is what I, uh, I'm going to settle on. 15 Characteristics of Therapist who can offer healing magic 
to borderline clients. So these are people that have the goods who can help you. And so I'm going to be speaking to you borderline clients about therapist shopping. And this is the kind of therapist. Uh, one route to go would be go with the franchise, go with DBT, go with the gold standard. Nothing wrong with that. Go for it. But I'm going to speak with you about a more traditional uh, psychotherapy approach to treating borderline personality disorder. So here's 15 characteristics. The first is in this uh, uh, more traditional psychotherapy approach, the therapeutic relationship is what is healing. It, you're not there to change how you think, and you're not there to uh, have cognitive education. You're there to have a relationship with your therapist. And that is what's healing. Um, in uh, an interview, Irv uh, Yalom said, if he had to pick a therapist from the history of movies that to, to, to go see uh, as a personal therapist, it would be Robin Williams in Goodwill Hunting. So why did Irv Yalom say that? Because the character Robin Williams played was frail and human and vulnerable. And he taught the arrogant character played by Matt Damon, Will Hunting, he taught the young man about vulnerability. But he, he also reached out and grabbed him by the throat and, and, and basically said, hey, you're from Southie, I'm from Southie, I ain't taking your shit, let's do some therapy, let's have a relationship. And only a therapist from Southie could have reached Will Hunting. So the therapeutic relationship, if you watch that movie, Good Will Hunting, the thing that changed Will was his relationship with Robin Williams. Because Robin Williams was authentic, but he had a lot of badassery going on. He had a lot of personal strength as well. The second attribute of a therapist who can help you and help heal you is they come from a non-medical model. Uh, again, a quote from Irv Yalom. The establishment of an authentic relationship with clients by its very nature demands that we forego the power of the triumphant of magic, mystery, and authority. So what is he saying there? He's saying that with a lot of therapists, they're up here and you're down here. And you know, their magic, their mystery, and their power comes from you not knowing a damn thing about them. And they're seen as this perfect person and you're this, you know, seen as this sick person. In authentic relationship psychotherapy, it's more like this. I'm a recovering person. I'm a human being. I have feelings. I'm going to be authentic. Who are you? That's the second quality. The, the third uh, quality that you'll want to look for in a therapist that you can have a relationship with for a long time. And that relationship can can help to heal you. Uh, you got to find somebody who's done their own work. Uh, Yalom says only, only the wounded healer can truly heal. Only the wounded healer can truly heal. So I was shattered two years and three months ago, as many of you know. Isn't that pretty? Look. And 
I was wounded horrifically. I was wounded profoundly. I was wounded within an inch of my life. But it's given me the depth and the compassion and the insight and the understanding to be a far better healer than I was before. Only the wounded healer can truly heal. Number four is, you know, in, in real estate, it's location, location, location. In therapy, it's process, process, process. And, and process is what's going on in the here and the now. What's going on in the room between you and your therapist? This is a, a quote by a psychologist named Ryan Howes who had an article in Psychology Today. And <clears throat> Mr. Howes wrote, perhaps the most powerful yet simple tool in psychotherapy is the here and the now. Sharing the raw, honest thoughts and feelings about what is going on in the moment. The concept, concept has been around forever, but no one champions its clinical use like Irvin Yalom. Here and now is based on the idea that the client's interpersonal issues will eventually emerge in the therapeutic relationship. A woman who feels betrayed by all her friends and family will probably feel betrayed by her therapist at some time. Addressing the material that emerges in the room, in the here, in the now, becomes the focus. Therapy becomes less talking about the issues and more working on them as they are happening in the here and now. Yalom encourages therapists and uh, clients alike to take the vulnerable risk of discussing what's actually happening in the moment and when you do that, there's a notable shift that often bears fruit. So you want somebody who pays attention to the little nuances that are going on in the room. Um, so uh, this example that uh, Mr. Howes gave was a woman who feels betrayed, she's going to project onto the therapist that the therapist uh, also um, betrayed her. And it made me think of years ago, I worked with a man, and he felt like everybody took advantage of him financially. And he would pay ahead of time. And it was a trap. And it was me being not a very insightful therapist. One week, my assistant made some kind of error in math. And then I got fired as the therapist because he says, aha, you're doing it too. You're just like the rest of them. Everybody's trying to cheat me out of my money. And I, I really shouldn't have allowed him to pay ahead of time. And I should have seen that coming. Um, when I'm when I'm sharing my 30 years of experience as a therapist, I'm sharing a lot of things that I did wrong, that didn't work very well. So just just know that. Um, so what's going on in the moment? Um, I have a. Uh, had a guy I worked with many years ago who had abandonment issues. And I would maybe have a thought come up like, hey, I got to get milk on the way home because we don't have any milk at the house. And I, my brain would just think that. And within seconds, he would go, where'd you go? He could tell that I wasn't a thousand percent present. Whereas um, somebody who doesn't have borderline personality disorder, they're, they're, they're there for information. They're not really there for the relationship. 
and I, my mind could wander 10 different places. And as long as I'm tracking the story, they don't pick up on it. Um, also, recently, um, I moved out of state from my native Indiana. And I told most of my clients, and they took the news fine. And I told them I would be around some. They were fine with that. Um, I told them that they could contact me via Skype if they wanted to. Everybody was fine. But then there was, uh, there was one uh, client who did feel, you know, a bond. And they needed to, they needed to have an in-depth discussion of, dude, who are you and why are you moving out of state? You know, what is this? So, um, so often um, therapy, it is about what's going on in the room. And you want, you want a therapist who's very connected to themselves and very connected to everything that's going on in the room so that they don't miss it. Let me give you a good example of this. My very first year as a therapist, I was working at an agency and we were doing interventions with families, but everybody was tuned out. All the rest of the families were gathered around and they were just making a lot of noise because they couldn't hear what was going on. So I stopped it and I addressed the process of how can we, let's get a microphone down here so people can participate and be part of the process. To which my uh, associates all were very angry because they were so focused and honed in on the content that they were deaf to the process. I'm gonna take my jacket off. It's it's warm here. Um, I I rarely wear my uh, sport coats anymore because uh, I, I just work from the house and I usually just uh, wear a pair of shorts. So number five. Um, characteristic of a therapist who can work therapeutic magic with borderline clients is there, there's focus on transference and counter-transference. Transference is what a client projects onto the therapist. Counter-transference is what the therapist projects onto the client. Um, Yalom says, I have often felt caught in a dilemma on the one hand, I wish to be more natural with you. And yet, on the other hand, because I feel that you're easily wounded and that you give my comments inordinate power, I feel I must consider my wording very, very carefully. What I was going to call this video the delicate art of therapy with borderlines um, because you gotta you gotta be very delicate because um, my experience has been if somebody has borderline personality disorder they've been severely abused and abandoned and they're going to try to reenact that dynamic in their relationship with you and they're gonna see you as abandoning them even if that hasn't taken place. So there's constant discussion about what might be going on in terms of how the client sees the therapist, how the therapist sees the client. Number six, um, you get reparented. I was working with a young gal the other day about the age of my daughters. I guess she's older than my daughters. She's about 10 years older than my daughters. But she she feels like a daughter. You, you, you want a, a, a therapist who can be fatherly or grandfatherly. Not that other therapists can't help you who are younger. They can. But with this intensive uh, rebuilding of your personhood from the ground up, recovery from borderline personality disorder. Um, if you can have a stable, caring, wise person who has your best interests in mind, who has um, solid boundaries, 
then you've got something that uh, is really valuable and, and can, you know, help you heal over time. Um, a therapist that I saw for many years, Rick Gustafson, um, he was just that, that, uh, that rock, that, that, that uh, provider of unconditional positive regard. He was an enlightened witness for my journey for many, many, many years. Um, number seven, your therapist can't take being devalued personally because somebody with borderline personality disorder is going to devalue you from time to time. And you just have to hear it, not take it personally, and then, hey, what do you think this could mean? that you um, thought that I was stealing your money. Why do you think I would do that? You'd process whatever came up, but you wouldn't take it personally. The eighth thing that these types of therapists have is um, they, they can be very delicate. Um, uh, much again, much of what I've uh, shared here is uh, earned over time through a lot of mistakes. Um, uh, if you, if if somebody is too harsh or unaware of their blind spots, they can really do damage to somebody who has borderline personality disorder. There, there, there's a fragility about them. And if, if you're solid and you have a, a solid sense of, of self and you're ethical and um, you're present and you're honest and you're real and you're devoted to the work, you can really help people a lot. Um, you know, most therapy we call insight-oriented psychotherapy is that you're there to have light bulbs go on. You're there to have an epiphany. It's very much my approach. But with some people, they need more sugar uh, to help the medicine go down. So rather than, I like, with most people, it's like 80% hard, cold truth, 20% sugar on top. Sometimes, if you don't have a fully developed sense of self, you might need 20% hardcore truth and 80% sugar on top for a while while you're building the relationship. There's a, a verse in the Bible. It says, do not strongly rebuke a mocker lest they hate you. And some therapists really prefer not to work with borderline clients. And I'm sorry uh, if anybody is offended by that notion, but basically there's either treatable borderlines or not so treatable. And the ones who are not so treatable are dangerous. Do not strongly rebuke a borderline lest they hate you. And if they hate you, they're going to, you know, complain about you on Google or, you know, the Better Business Bureau, or they'll be calling up your licensing board and making complaints because they're projecting onto you that you shamed them when what you really did was just be authentic. So um, the, the 11th, uh, quality that a therapist really needs is they need supervision. Um, if you do have borderline personality disorder, it's complex. And there's there's blind spots. Is that a hummingbird? What is that? Um, there's blind spots. And you need all the eyes on it that you can get. And I'm fortunate to uh, have had uh, Rick Gustafson uh, helped me uh, in recent years as my supervisor, and he uh, is able to, to, to help me specially sort out uh, my reactions and uh, 
my observations of difficult clients who require delicacy, which are usually people with borderline personality disorder. Um, the the 12th thing is you're, you're probably not going to do marital work with your borderline therapist because marital work is by nature more confrontive and it's really about forming a strong therapeutic alliance with the person who has the borderline issues and it doesn't lend itself to marriage counseling. Um, number 13 is Irv Yalom is real uh, adamant about this that he likes to hug his clients, especially his borderline clients. And there's a there's there's a hesitancy. Um, I, I, I tend to I, I'm not much of a hugger. Um, uh, but if, if somebody comes in and they really show me their wounded little kid, I can't help but give them a hug on the way out the door. So 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 you want a therapist who's not too huggy, not too touchy feely, but who is present and available for people that do need a hug. The hug's not for the therapist. The hug is for the client. Um, here's something that's really cool. When you work with somebody for a long time and they grow up and they grow into themselves and they find their place in the world and they get in a healthy relationship and they sort out their career and they fix their financial problems and then it comes time to end and it's like a graduation it's a beautiful beautiful thing i had a couple in the other day they're not uh borderlines but they're people that have grown up and and uh i'll probably see them again but i probably won't see them for a while because they have a wonderful wonderful loving connected healthy relationship and they knew i was going to be out of town a lot and um you can grow into yourself and have the kind of healthy lifestyle that you dream about so how do you find such a therapist uh let me say this that they're rare uh, somebody with the courage to be authentic the wisdom to figure out who you are the healthiness to have healthy boundaries somebody who cares but not too much this is a rare this is a rare therapist and when you go don't be surprised if they run over a few minutes and there's somebody waiting when you leave because they're feeding people's souls so there's going to be a line at the door um don't just coldly uh, look on your insurance panel. You're not going to probably find anybody there who can help you. Um, uh, go to your recovery 12-step groups um, and hear the scuttlebutt on who are the therapists that can really um, care and heal and know and see and not take your shit but not shame you and care some more and um, take the referral of a friend or a family member or a pastor. But if you find such a therapist, it ain't going to be easy. Um, but uh, you, you, can, you can get some reparenting. There are good therapists out there with good hearts and they are available to, to help you and it's their joy to do so. Um, I believe that I am such a fellow. I, I can't work with too many more people. But if you have been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and you resonate with what I'm sharing with you, then this is my invitation to have an authentic, appropriate, healthy, stunningly insightful, um, raw, uh, real, gutty, life-changing, therapeutic relationship with, uh, 
where somebody's been around the block a couple times, knows the way. So that's what I had to say. I'm, I'm, I'm praying and hoping that uh, all of you who need such a therapist will find them and that you'll be given time to be cared for, time to be nurtured. Uh, Goodwill Hunting had Robin Williams' character and it changed his whole life. Um, it changed his whole life because he came in contact with somebody who understood him but wouldn't take his shit and was strong enough and loving enough and caring enough to tell him the truth and to always put his interests first. So, um, hey, if you haven't joined or subscribed to our channel, do that. Uh, we've got a lot of articles at uh, FamilyTreeCounseling.com. And also, I've got uh, six books. I've got books on uh, narcissistic uh, abuse syndrome recovery and on shame and on abandonment. I don't have any on borderline personality disorder, but I just made a video just for you. So uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and God bless.